Hi right guys, in this video we'll have a look at configuring a site-to-site -site VPN connection using Microsoft Azure. This is the VPN diagram between Azure and my Palo Alto home network, but in this video we are only looking at the Azure side of the VPN configuration. And on the left it's my home network with the Palo Alto device to provide the VPN connectivity. And on the right hand side is my Azure network with an Azure VPN gateway which will be used to create the VPN tunnel to the Palo Alto device. Before we dive into the Azure configuration, we'll have a look at what's needed to create a site-to-site -site VPN connection on Microsoft Azure. And the first step is we'll need to put pen to paper and plan the configuration. So for example, identify the IP addresses needed, the subnets, the pre-shared keys, even the crypto algorithms, etc. And we can even put it all on a Visio diagram. So we've got all the information in front of us before we start the configuration. And for step two, we would need to create or identify which virtual networks we would need to configure the VPN within. And just to bear in mind, the IPs cannot conflict with the on-premise network. So keep the IP addresses unique on both sides of the tunnel. Next, we'll create a gateway subnet, which contains the IP addresses that the virtual network gateway VMs and services will use. And for step four, we would create a local network gateway, which represents the remote VPN device at the remote end, which will be my Palo Alto network device at the other end of the VPN connection. Then we'll create a virtual network gateway, which is where we specify the gateway type, VPN type and so on. And after that, for step six, we would create the connection between the two gateway devices. And in here, we would add things like the pre-shared key. Then we would move on to step seven. And in step seven, we would configure the remote end of the VPN device. So in my case, it will be the Palo Alto network firewall. I will not be doing that in this video, but I will be doing a separate video on the configuration of the Palo Alto firewall. And finally, in step eight, we will test it all and we would confirm the connection is up. Now we can jump onto the Azure portal and have a look at the Azure VPN configuration itself. So we are now on the home page of the Azure web portal. And the first task is to create or identify the virtual network to create all our resources within. And we can do this by searching for virtual networks. So if we go up to the search bar here and type virtual networks, and it's the first one here. So we'll click on it. And I've got a couple of virtual networks in here from previously, but we will create a new one. So if I go to create, and we can create our virtual network from here. So the subscription, I've only got one, so that's the default. We will leave that as it is. Next is resource group. And I will create a new resource group for it. Let's call it VPN or VPN RG for resource group. Click OK here. And then we will give it a name. Let's call it VPN hyphen VNet. I can leave the region as UK South. That's absolutely fine. So let's go down here and move next to IP address or we can click it from here as well. And we've already got subnet in here, so I'm going to stick with the default here. But you can create new subnets from here. You just need to click on Add Subnet and on the right hand side here, you just need to fill it in. Subnet name and the subnet range, the net mask, etc. down here and click Add at the bottom of here. So we will click Cancel for now and stick to our default. And click next and over here if we need any security for our vnet including a bastion host or ddos protection or a firewall we can select them from here but we will leave them all as disabled and click next to go to tags and from here we can create some tags and uh, this is used for categorizing resources and for billing purposes as well but we will leave tags alone. We don't need any tags. So we will again click next to go to review and create here. And finally, as our validation has passed, you can review the configuration settings here that we have chosen. And then we just need to click on create here. So while the deployment is in progress, the next step is we need to create a gateway subnet which can be created before the VPN gateway itself or whilst creating the VPN gateway. And the gateway subnet contains the IP addresses that the virtual network gateway VMs and services use. And when we create the gateway subnet, we would specify the number of IP addresses that the subnet contains. 
and the IP addresses in the gateway subnet are allocated to the gateway VMs and the gateway services needed to create the VPN configuration. Some configurations require more IP addresses than others, such as if you are using ExpressRoot, for example. But for ours, we will just leave it as a slash 28, which is more than enough IP addresses. But generally speaking, as your recommends a subnet size of slash 27, which is approximately, which is 32 addresses, or should I say 30 usable addresses or larger. So they recommend slash 27 as the minimum and because our deployment is complete here we can go to resource from here and now we're inside our virtual network vpn vnet and we need to be in here to create our gateway subnet so the next thing we need to do is we need to click on subnets here and then at the top here we need to click on gateway subnet and we configure this on the right hand side it says add subnet we cannot change the name, it has to be called Gateway Subnet, that's by default. But we can change the subnet address, which is the next one. And the subnet address is 10.2.1.0 slash 24 by default. But let's change this to a slash um, 28. And we do not need to create a NAT gateway here, so we can leave that alone. We do not need any routing tables, etc. So we can leave all this stuff alone here. And with service endpoints and subnet delegation, these are for specific use cases such as platform as a service requirement. Service endpoint in particular, this one here, is to do with providing a secure and direct connection to Azure services over the Azure Backbone network. But we don't need to configure them for this purpose, so we will click save here. And that's done. We can see it here, gateway subnet. So that's created. And the next step is we need to create a local network gateway to represent the remote VPN gateway at the data center office. And we can search for that over here in our search bar. So let's search for local network gateway. And let's click that one. And now let's click on create local network gateway here. And now we need to fill in the local network gateway settings. So let's start with resource group here. The resource group will be the one we created, which is VPNRG. And for region, we will leave it as UK South. And for name, we will give it a name of Office to Azure underscore VPN. And for endpoint, we can select either IP address or fully qualified domain name. We will leave it as IP address here. And then for IP address here, we will provide the public IP address of the remote gateway. That's my Palo Alto firewall. Or you can even use a fully qualified domain name to build the tunnel over. So I will blur this out as it's my home address. But you want to specify your public IP address, whatever IP address you're using at the remote end. And once that's done, we need to give it the address space at the remote side as well. So for this, we need to specify the network addresses at the remote site. And this will be the private IP addresses within your data center or office typically. So I'm going to specify my address as 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And that will be it for this page. Let's click on next to go to the advanced page. So if we needed to create the BGPS number and the IP address, we can configure that from here so the autonomous system number and the BGP PIP address here as well we are not going to do that so let's click no here and let's move on to next to review the settings and create the local network gateway so you can review and create it from here you can check your settings and then click on create and now that's complete the next step is to create a virtual network gateway we'll do this a bit differently this time let's go to the menu option on the top left the three lines let's click on that and let's go to all resources and from all resources all resources is actually the wrong option all services are meant so let's click on all services and from all services let's click on networking here and once you've clicked on networking you would see the networking options on the right hand side here and the one I want is on the bottom right here, Virtual Network Gateway. So let's click on that. And then let's create Virtual Network Gateway. There's quite a few options in here. Starting off with subscription. So as usual, I'll leave mine as default. And with the resource group here, the VNet needs to be populated down here within Virtual Networks before it lets me configure this option here. So let's go to Virtual Networks and let's click on our VPN VNet. 
and then you can see it's automatically configured the resource group for me vpn hyphen rg derived from virtual networks resource group and we will give it a virtual network gateway name so we'll call it azure underscore s2s underscore vpn and again as always for region uk south is fine for me as i'm based in the uk and the next is the gateway type and we will leave this as vpn but we can also see the option for express route in here as well and from my previous video you will see that the vpn is or the vpn has three subsections site to site vpn point to site vpn and network to network vpn connection and the express route has lots of uh, different connection models as well but let's leave vpn selected and let's go to vpn type so vpn type we've got two options one is route based and one is policy based and we will choose we will leave it as root based vpn you would use root based vpn for most vpn types such as remote user vpn connections which is point to site vpn for mobile users working from home or if you have multiple site to site connections so not just a single site to site connection or even for into virtual network traffic traffic between vnets or if you need to use ik version 2 as ik version 2 is newer so there's a few enhancements with it these are all reasons why you would use root based vpn root based vpn supports all of them scenarios and there is also a few other situations where root based vpn is used and next we would need to select a gateway SKU. and for this depending on which one we choose will determine the number of ipsec tunnels we can have the throughput bgp peers and other things like that i'll choose a basic one which is actually called basic but the basic gateway should not be used for any production scenario so it's uh, good for testing and demo purposes and if you click on the eye as usual on any of these eyes you can uh, retrieve more information about what they are or be able to drill into more information like in here learn more and the next option is generation so there's generation one and there's also generation two as well for me it doesn't give me the option because we've selected basic here so if I change basic to something else like this one here it gives me generation 2 or generation 1 so these can change depending on what you choose for your SKU and with the new generation of VPN gateways provide much better tunnel performance of up to 1 gigabits per second and if using multiple tunnels then it can be an aggregate of 1.25 gigabits per second and you've also got the option of enabling something called active active VPN gateway as well this just provides even higher throughput with multiple flows to the VPN gateways let's change this back to normal though back to basic and let's stick to generation one here and our VNet is VPN net we can see our subnet here gateway subnet 10.2.1.0 slash 28 that's what we configured and let's scroll down from here to see the rest of the options Oh, and here's the active active option I just spoke about here enable active active mode and again you would use this if you want some load balancing basically both gateways are actively handling IPsec tunnels where both instances of the gateway VMs will establish site to site VPN tunnels to your on-premise VPN device so it does uh, some load balancing if you need that and you need high throughput and for public IP addresses here we can create a new one or we can use an existing one here and actually the VPN gateway only sports the dynamic option so you can see from assignment here dynamic is selected so the main option we need to configure here is the public IP address name so let's call it VPN hyphen public underscore IP and we will leave these two disabled here we will skip tags as we've seen these already let's go to review and create and as its validation has passed let's click on create here and i completely forgot to mention this step actually takes 30 to 40 minutes so uh, what i'll do is pause the video and once it's up and running i will start the video again right after about 40 minutes that virtual network gateway has been created and we can go to the resource from here as well and out of interest if you need to know what your dynamically assigned public ip address is it's listed just here but for us and the last part to actually configure anything is to create the connection and for that we need to select virtual networks so let's search for virtual networks within the search bar let's click on virtual networks then choose the vpn vnet here 
And in connected devices, we can see the virtual network gateway appears here. It's your SAT SAT VPN. We just need to click this and on the left hand side, we can configure our connections, which is just above point site configuration. So here we go connections. Let's click on connections and we can add a new connection. Let's click on add. So to start off with, as usual, let's give it a name. Let's call it site. You know, let's just call it S2S hyphen connection. Keep it short and simple. And the connection type is not VNet to VNet. It is going to be site to site. And it automatically adds the virtual network gateway in there for us, which is Azure underscore S2S VPN. Then we need to choose our local network gateway, the local network gateway we created earlier. So let's click on that. And we can see our local network gateway here, Office to Azure VPN. Let's click on it and it's chosen our Office to Azure VPN in here within local network gateway. Next, let's give it a pre-shared key. And just to remember, you need the pre-shared key for the other side as well. So the pre-shared key needs to be the same on both sides of the VPN connection. This is the way they authenticate to each other. So let's leave all the rest of the settings as they are and let's click OK. And last but not least, we need to confirm the VPN is up. But for that, I need to configure the Palo Alto firewall, bring that up and running. And once the Palo Alto device is configured, it will show the VPN tunnel within this page here, within connections, and should show the status as up, which means that the tunnel is up and running. Right, I'm back. So what I've done is I've configured the Palo Alto firewall. I've configured the site site VPN on there and I've got the tunnel up and running on the Palo Alto side. So what we need to do on this side is just confirm the VPN is up. So I'm in my virtual network gateways. If I select my Azure site site VPN here and if we go to connections here, I can see that my uh, connection is up. So status is connected. And then if I click on connections, S2S connections. I can see more information in here. So I can see the status is up. I can see my virtual network gateway and my peer and my local network gateway and the IP addresses for them as well. I can also go to configuration. So in here I can configure some things including my IPsec and IKE policies. So these are my encryption, authentication, hashing algorithms. So I just need to select custom and I can change things in here. So encryption, I can specify a, a certain encryption. I can customize the integrity. I can choose a Diffie-Hellman group and I can do this for IKE phase two as well in here. So if you wanted to change it, this is where you change it all from. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching guys.